Hello dear viewers, it is always a pleasure when you're able to join us for the news here on Rwanda Television. My name is Serge Nhori. Let us begin with the headlines. Intelligence experts from Rwanda, the DRC and Angola have met in Luanda to discuss the security situation in the eastern DRC. Rwanda's Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation has held a diplomatic briefing on recent developments in the region. The Special Representative of the UN Secretary General in the Central African Republic and the Head of the UN Multidimensional Integrated Stabilization Mission, INCAR, have received a Rwandan delegation headed by the RDF Army Chief of Staff, Major General Vincent Nyakarundi in Bangui. Now the details. Intelligence experts from Rwanda, the DRC, and Angola have met in Luanda to discuss the security situation in the eastern DRC. This comes following the second ministerial meeting on the security and peace situation in the eastern DRC, also held in Luanda, Angola, last week. At that time, it was agreed that a ceasefire starting on Sunday should occur between FARDC, that is the armed forces of the DRC, and the M23 rebel group fighting in North Chivu, but it was never respected. During that meeting, both sides also agreed on the neutralization of the FDLR terrorist group that includes genocide perpetrators that committed atrocities here in Rwanda during the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, the group that is now based in North Chivu. It was agreed then that the intelligence experts should meet to discuss that objective. <clears throat> Now, as we noted in the headlines, on Wednesday uh, morning, Minister Olivier Ndugunjirehe held a diplomatic briefing on recent developments in the region. The Rwandan Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation also touched on upcoming events and introduced Dr. Richard Mihigo to the diplomatic corps in Kigali. Dr. Mihigo is Rwanda's nominated candidate for Regional Director of the World Health Organization Regional Office for Africa. Now to other matters here in Rwanda. The Rwanda Utility Regulatory Authority, that is RULA, has announced a reduction in gasoline prices, which has been welcomed by the general public. We have the details with Enora Gladys Benimana. This Wednesday, Rwanda Utility Regulatory Authority has announced that the gasoline price per litre is now going to be 1,629 Rwandan francs, whereby the former price was 1,663 Rwandan francs, whereas the fuel oil price remained on the 1,652 Rwandan francs. Specifically, to those who have vehicles using gasoline, this reduction was good news to them because it will facilitate the transportation system. It's a very interesting thing because everything that comes from the gasoline highly affects the country. When it reduces, transport also reduces and prices in general reduce, which benefits everyone. 34 and francs is a lot because when you'd like to buy like 100 liters getting resources from Kabarondo, that is a lot of money deducted. Even if it will be five random francs, that's a lot of amount deducted. It is really understandable. When a passenger would like to be taken to a place of maybe 1,500 random francs, for now, it is going to be around 1,200. So it's going to be helpful to us and our clients. If I used 5,000 that get 3.31 liters, it is now going to be around 3.80 liters, which is a big increase. The business people also has agreed that when there is reduction of fuel prices, facilitates international marketing, which can reduce the prices of products also. <laughs> Urabona 
A bus coming from outside Kigali city heading to Kigali, your baggage is really expensive. But because of the deduction, baggage fee is going to be deducted also, which is easy for us. When we hear that there is a deduction in gasoline prices, we expect that the cost of living is going to be easy in general. The prices of food will be deducted, transportation fees will be deducted also, and everything in general. Randa Utility Regulatory Authority says that this reduction of prices in Randa is based on its reduction worldwide. The average of gasoline around the world is $1.32 US dollars per liter. On 5th of June 2024, also the prices was also updated again. In that time, gasoline was deducted up to 101 random francs, where the former price was 1,764 random francs per liter and reduced up to 1,663 random francs per liter. Whereas the fuel oil was reduced up to 32 rand and francs per liter and reached to the to 1,652 rand and francs, which is the current price. Enora Gladys. Thank you, Enora. Now, the National Electoral Commission has noted that the submissions of candidatures for those that want to vie for seats in the Senate have continued, with the deadline having been extended to the 11th of this month of August. From the sixth of uh, from the sixth, with the starting date having been the thirtieth of July, Charles Munyaneza, the executive secretary of the National Electoral Commission, has explained that the elections themselves are scheduled for the sixteenth and seventeenth of next month. A total of twenty-six seats are to be filled in the Senate. Twelve senators are to be elected from Kigali City and the provinces. Eight are to be appointed by His Excellency the President of the Republic. Four are to be elected by the members of the National Consultative Forum of Political Organizations. And the final two are to be elected from the faculties of the country's private and, private and public universities, as well as institutions of higher learning by their peers. The 12 elected in Kigali and the provinces get their votes from members of the advisory councils. The Executive Secretary of the National Electoral Commission also explained that the 12 seats are located, are allocated according to the populations of the different electorate areas, with more going to areas with bigger populations. He also explained that the deadline for the submissions of candidatures was extended in order to give more people the opportunity to stand for election and that these elections should be taken just as seriously as the recently concluded presidential and legislative elections of July. Now, again, as we noted in the headlines, Valentin Bugwavisa, the special representative of the UN Secretary General in the Central African Republic and the head of the UN Multidimensional Integrated Stabilization Mission in CAR, have received a Rwandan delegation headed by the RDF Army Chief of Staff, Major General Vincent Nyakarundi, at her office in Bangui, the capital city of the Central African Republic. Also present was Rwanda's ambassador to the Central African Republic, His Excellency Olivier Kayumba, as well as other senior military officials from the RDF. The head of the MINUSCA thanked RDF troops for their contributions to the peace efforts in CAR and their level of professionalism in the way they carry out their duties. The efforts of the RDF personnel to improve the social welfare of communities in different ways, not just ensuring security, were also commended because of the way they have helped to build trust between the people of the Central African Republic and the UN mission in that country. <clears throat> now, staying with military matters, on Tuesday, the Rwanda Defense Force Chief of Defense Staff, General Mubarak Muganga, presided over the pass-out ceremony of an infantry brigade at the command training center in Gabiro. The brigade completed a six Pardon me, the brigade completed an intensive six-month advanced infantry course. The comprehensive training covered a wide range of subjects, including marksmanship skills, tactics, command and control, martial arts, physical fitness, and heliborne operations. The pass-out ceremony showcased various demonstrations highlighting the skills and knowledge acquired by the brigade during their training. Attendees witnessed impressive 
uh, displays, of, displays of tactics, martial arts and live firing exercises illustrating the brigade's readiness and capability. Now at least six to seven billion Rwandan francs are needed for introducing 180 water level sensor stations to be added to the existing 59, enabling the government to better plan for the water usage in the country. That is since 2017, Prince Manzi has the details. These stations are made of solar batteries and the camera held on wire strings across the waters. As elaborated by the Hydro Database Specialist at the Rwanda Water Resources Board, Jacqueline Wimbabazi, this measures the length and width of the waters through a card inserted in the data logger and with the help of the GPRS technology saving data every 15 minutes. <laughs> Here we have a logger that receives the data from the sensor to collect data. We use the normal SIM cards we put on funds for us to be able to receive data. And we then use Aquaria software for preserving and storing the measures. Here we have a telemeter station which provides accurate data every 15 minutes. Last year, floods in Rwanda claimed lives of over 130 people and destroyed close to 6,000 homes, whereas in 2018, infrastructures and crops worth 200 billion US dollars were destroyed worldwide. Remy Noba Duhuze, the Water Monitoring and Quality Control Division Manager at the Rwanda Water Resources Board, reiterates that the board is analyzing on how these stations can be used to alert citizens on possible disasters. On disasters, these stations can as well help, but as you see, these sensor stations send data informing on the intensity of the waters at the moment. But to determine how tense water will be in future, it takes other systems and other studies, but the studies ongoing started with the volcanic region. It is not only studies, but we started implementing it in collaboration with other levels. So these stations can help. The project is in place, and in the near future, it will be realized and will be able to alert citizens. At least 6 to 7 billion Rwanda francs are needed for introducing 180 water level sensor stations for the Rwanda Water Resources Board to access M4 on all waters in the country. 59 stations already exist across the country, collecting data on water levels for the country to plan and benefit waters, mostly through establishing hydropower stations and irrigation projects. Not later than 2030, the UN projects 560 major disasters to affect the world annually, hence urging the heightened targeted investment of 3.1 billion US dollars from 2023 to 2027 in alerting projects. Thank you, Prince Manzi, for that report. Now, in November, Rwanda will be hosting the Africa Energy Expo, a first of its kind true Pan African event aimed at promoting sustainable, innovative energy solutions and driving the African energy transition. The event brings together government officials, utilities, regulators, EPC contractors, power pools, investors, and who's who's of the energy sector to discuss opportunities and solutions to bridge the gap in the African energy landscape. The program aims to create partnerships and opportunities to connect investors, technology providers, project developers, as well as other innovators in the sector, from solar power to oil and gas, from facilities management to smart metering, Africa Energy brings it all together in one place in Rwanda, the heart of Africa. You would see that it is 95% represented of South Africa. And, and so is all the other African energy uh, events. So for Africa to, to, to be able to take advantage of you know, incre increased electrification and investment drive into the power sector, the African government or African energy players needs to have a platform where the issue of power is being addressed. Hence the reason why we've launched the African Energy Expo in Rwanda. There's no other place it would have made sense to launch it. Rwanda is very friendly when it comes to 
you know, um, the ease of doing business in Africa? No. Rwanda's aspiring physician scientist Olivier Wishema is leading a charge in global health research through a research fellowship established, a non-profit organization dedicated to addressing critical health issues not only here in Rwanda but also across the world with a mission of engaging young people in professional health, education and scientific research worldwide, as he explained to our colleague Adam Squizera during the following exclusive interview. Take a look. My name is Olivier. I did the medicine in Turkey and I'm the founder of All Health Magazine Organization, OHMO. I published more than 100 scientific publications in peer reviewed journals. I was featured in Forbes and I was selected uh, among 30 young people on the, on the list of Forbes under 30 in medicine and research. I presented in my research in different countries such as USA, Canada, UK, Germany, France, uh, Japan, South Korea. Uh, I received different awards such as the, the award I received in 2022 given by the, the Society for Neuro Oncology. I received another award given by the American Academy of Neurology, the 2024 International School Award. Uh, I was listed on the list of uh, the United Nations among young people who were fighting against COVID-19. And uh, I established and contributed uh, in, on many different projects and uh, participated on, in diff on different training programs, teaching young people how they can take care of themselves and how they can conduct uh, scientific research. I mostly conduct or conducted research uh, on, on uh, brain diseases, neurological disorders. For example, I conduct uh, research about stroke, uh, brain cancer, epilepsy, Alzheimer. Uh, the research we conduct or I conduct mostly contribute in uh, informing uh, policymakers and letting the society know how they can fight against such diseases and as well as also we we make a contribution in academia the society mostly on rwandan society we 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 mostly or i mostly engage with young people in terms of teaching them how to fight against different diseases mostly like I focus on uh, brain diseases or neurological disorders, we conduct many, many outreach programs in Rwandan or, or in different Rwandan areas to teach citizens how to fight against different diseases, how they can take care of themselves. We recently conducted an outreach program in the Nyamagabe district in Southern province. We trained students from high schools how to how to fight against mental health disorders, how they can be, uh, how they can be helped when they are suffering from uh, mental health disorders. We trained the teachers how they can help them once they have different symptoms. We, so th those are examples of some of our outreach programs we have been conducting since 2022. Many people still as don't know how to fight or how to protect themselves from such diseases. So there is there's still a lack of out, many outreach programs. So in order to fight against or to try to reduce the, the number of diseases, brain diseases that have been increasing, we need to increase uh, many educational programs. When I say educational programs, I'm talking about uh, outreach programs, different outreach programs to teach citizens, to teach Rwandans how to fight against those diseases, to teach them the, the symptoms of such diseases. As long as we teach them symptoms or how to fight against those such diseases, we are going to those the citizens or Rwandans are, will be aware of such diseases. They they are going to to go to hospitals or health centers to seek for assistance from doctors or from, from health care providers. In such case, such diseases, we are going to, uh, to start decreasing. So in order to, to, to fight against or to reduce such increase, we need the, the, there is a need of uh, 
increasing educational programs, outreach programs to let the citizens of Rwanda know more about such diseases, the way they, they may prevent from those such diseases, the symptoms, and to, read, to tell them to go to the hospital as, as, uh, as soon as they, 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 they found out such symptoms of those, such, of those diseases. OHMO or my organization, or have maximum organization, a non-profit scientific organization, which was founded in 2018 with a mission to engage young people in professional health education and scientific research, has been contributing to the society in terms of, uh, like I said, uh, conducting training program, outreach program, teaching young people how to conduct research, uh, helping young people publishing they unpublish this such project. And also, this is very important because many people or many students or many young people are, in, are being encouraged to get involved in research so that they can, be, uh, they can find different solutions, different solutions of, uh, of different problems. And that is the end of the news, but do stay with Rwanda Television as the programs continue. I'll be seeing you soon. Goodbye.